um, at this particular moment, when Pakistan is having a lot of trouble. I mean, the Sindh province, which yeah. is the economic, uh, you know, uh, sort of lifeline I, of Pakistan. I Can I just complete? Yeah. And, then, and, and so, uh, naturally, I mean, one, one has to build up a, a certain hypothesis. Now, the more you reflect on it, the more you feel that the entire thing is an exercise in setting the stage for some other decision. Now, I don't think for a moment that decision would be a military decision. Boots on the ground, uh, a surgical strike. There has strike. been a statement by the, Senator uh, Graham. Yeah. No, I, mean, I think what, what the, the danger yeah. is that this is a signal that the United States has decided to reshape its relationship with Pakistan. All right. And that may include uh, a very severe right. uh, cut in, in the military co cooperation and right. possibly okay. also on the economic side. Yeah. So now, now this is something which America has to dispel. Yeah. Pakistan can only do what you are, what you have hinted at. Because I, okay. I also would like no, to... Uh, no, yes, certainly. Knock, knock at the doors of its friends, China, Iran, whoever it is, yeah. and make sure that they, we have a countervailing strategy. Okay. I, I just want to add the same thing, that given the fact that we, even who are in the media and not in the government, more than 18 months we are aware of the simmering tensions on the issue of the Haqqani network, the Afghan Taliban, the inability of the American forces, the US forces, to produce the desired results in Afghanistan. I don't say they have been defeated or they have serious setbacks, but the point, the kind of results they wanted, they're not getting those results. We see American election uh, hovering on the scene. We see the kind of tension building up inside the Obama administration for results. Uh, the Obama administration has one agenda, the Pentagon has another different kind of agenda. And Mike Mullen also had a sense of, uh, um, uh, what I would say, a sort of uh, not being able to achieve the results. Okay. The, the point is that it looks the Obama administration wants to do something or achieve something which is not specifically what they are saying. They're setting a ground. Right. They are setting a ground and these this accusations was, yeah. which are coming without much proof. This was what I was coming to Dr. Pizada with you. You know, the pressure tactics. The pressure um, tactics. Many, many people are saying that what you're hearing is what we've been hearing for quite some time now going on between Pakistan and United States. For example, when United States uh, threatens of uh, unilateral action that we've heard from uh, Senator Graham, Pakistan responds by saying that it can cut off the NATO supply yes. routes. So I'm just curious to find out, um, because the way it has been covered in media, I'm sure you've followed that uh, very strongly. Uh, it seems that Pakistan has taken all of this this time as a threat of uh, invasion. How do you look at that? I don't think so. You know, what actually happened was that since the, as we have mentioned many times during this program, both sides had these tensions simmering for quite a while, but these were actually being discussed behind the scenes. Now, significant players on the American side, like Mike Mullen, then senators and the other people and spokespersons, have brought it open in the arena, in the, in the public forum. And the Pakistani side was compelled and persuaded to respond in kind. Pakistanis thought it very important. They thought if they keep it lying low, for uh, also uh, the Pakistani side feels that there is in fact a very deliberate thinking on part of so many people like Bruce Riddle and so many people in DC that ISI is perhaps some sort of rogue militia which is separate from Pakistani military or Pakistani military perhaps has an agenda on Afghanistan which is not being shared by Pakistan's mm -hmm. political leadership and by the civil society. So Pakistanis thought it very important to come yeah. together on one platform okay. and give a consolidated comprehensive response to what is emanating from right. Washington DC. I think this is how you can actually right. see it. And we'll go to Washington DC very briefly, uh, Mr. Khan. What does Pakistan fear the most now, keeping in mind what Dr. Pirzada just pointed out? A cut uh, in military aid or uh, military action? I think the, the, there is a great deal of anxiety in Pakistan because Pakistan has committed a mistake. And the mistake is that in the last 10 years, Pakistan has put all its eggs in the American basket. It has allowed other relationships to, to languish, to wither yeah. away. And, and, and now suddenly the, the, there is a revelation that something else, as, as Mohit said, uh, is going on behind the scenes. Right. Something said. else is going on and, behind and, the scenes. And that, of course, right. uh, I mean, if that is okay. the case, right. uh, Pakistan would have to run sort of twice as fast as, right. as it has been doing. Doing right, just just to sort of stay mm -hmm. afloat. So, uh, Cocker, if I could uh, take this question to Mr. Whiten, um, what's apparent from the conversation going on here and uh, tracking the sentiment uh, um, in media, especially? What has hurt the uh, Pakistanis is the fact that uh, they're wondering that why does U.S. think that after Pakistan making so many sacrifices itself, for example, uh, thirty thousand Pakistani lives have 35, been lost, uh, thirty-five thousand, as Dr. Pizada points out, have been lost. Why does the U.S. think that Pakistan 
would go against its interest in Afghanistan at this critical juncture in the end game of Afghanistan as is being said that it was involved in the attack on the US embassy in Kabul and the NATO headquarters and the truck bombing that um, happened Well, I think there's a perception among those who watch uh, Pakistan and Washington that, uh, you know, that's not just one incident, that in fact it's a broader fact pattern at work here. And Admiral Mullen isn't someone who's on the leading edge of policy. He'd actually be on the trailing edge, being in the uniformed military. And again, the uniformed military, uh, among those who are the most irritated with um, perceived Pakistani involvement in terrorism, whether it's directed against the U.S. and Afghanistan or against India, um, the military would be the ones who are probably least interested in bringing that up because they have the more immediate mission of trying to accomplish some security goals in Afghanistan, especially before the drawdown of U.S. troops begins there. So again, to have him out there, uh, I think is just a, a real turning point change in the status quo. There are also other factors at play, and actually I'm not sure there, there is a, a concerted effort or a methodical effort in the Obama administration to rethink Pakistan's uh, or policy toward Pakistan. Uh, this may, in the past, the administration has not had a coordinated policy and coordinated message. If you just look at what came out of the administration when the uprising in Egypt began, it seemed like open mic night where one official would say one thing and another would, would say another. But um, again, you have a, a, a very different tone here. And also that tone is reflected on the other. Any good or did Pakistan any good to warn that the U.S. may lose an ally if uh, the U.S. cuts aid to Pakistan? It came across, frankly, as somewhat hectoring and somewhat threatening. And it reminded people in Washington that uh, the partnership between Islamabad and Washington is not so much based on shared interests or shared concerns for the future of Afghanistan or for the broader region, but seems to be more monetary. It's, it doesn't seem like a durable, lasting partnership. Let me bring uh, Dr. Almer in on uh, this one. Dr. Almer, uh, both our guests in Islamabad said this action on the part of the United States by accusing Pakistan in public has something more than that meets the eye. Uh, and I read Pakistani opinion pages and there are all kinds of scenarios including empowering India more, giving India more share in Afghanistan, Pakistan's nuclear assets and all of that. Do you also smell something? There is something more than that meets the eye? Well, I may smell it, but to smell it's not enough. <laughs> we need to be more realistic here. And I will go along with the point made by uh, Mr. Khan in the sense that there is something happening here. But the question is what? Uh, we need to pay attention to the American domestic arena in that perspective. And something that was alluded to also by Mr. Wheaton. Uh, Congress is very angry at Pakistan. Uh, we, people in Pakistan need to be aware of that. And the Republican majority in particular, and the American media is losing its patience, and I can see that there may be an attempt on the part of the Obama administration to show a kind of forceful approach towards this issue, like they try to show on other issues, including domestic American issues. I would not go as far as Mr. Khan is going in terms of suggesting that that may be a uh, the rupture between America and uh, Pakistan or the beginning of it, it may be a very strong signal that things cannot go on as they've done until now, as they've been until now. But let me make another point here which might surprise your viewers in Pakistan. This administration has proved on other regional issues that they had a tendency sometimes to talk very tough, especially with their allies. The same happened also between the President and Mr. Netanyahu in Israel a few months ago and everything changed later on because of difference of uh, circumstances and political interests and so on and so forth. So I would advise our friends in Pakistan to take this also into account. I mean, it may be an expression of frustration, but it may be that. It may be not more than that. But look, the American public opinion in Congress are very upset about Pakistan. That needs to be said. Uh, but when you talk about Congress, of course, the issue of money comes up. Well, okay, yeah. And um, um, yeah. one of the guests in Islamabad said that uh, this may result in cutting aid to Pakistan, and this may be an effort to set the stage for cutting the aid for Pakistan. That has its own merits on its own. This is, the case can stand on its own feet. The United States is suffering from one of its worst financial crises in years. 
should that not be a strong enough reason to cut the aid and then instead of going that route that threatening Pakistan? Uh, well, it may sound like that, but not always what sounds so logical is what happens in reality. Because the other side of the same coin would be to suggest that if you start along the road of cutting aid to one country, what's the end of all that? And this is kind of an admission, even on the part of the Republican majority in Congress, that America is really losing its status as a superpower in the world and all that. And I would I would think that we are not yet there, but that's a problem. Look, foreign aid is a big issue. They are not yet touching upon it. They talk much about it. But even if you look at the Republican candidates, the only one who really talks about it is Ron Paul, who is, you know, a marginal candidate in the end of the day. So I would suggest that it is a possibility. I do not see it happening in the immediate future. I don't believe in it. Let, let me check with our control room if it's time for us to toss to a break, uh, or uh, can we carry this con? All right. Okay. Uh, we, we still have a couple of minutes. Let me go to Islamabad and ask Dr. Khan. Dr. Khan, both, uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Khan, both Dr. Pirzada and you mentioned that there is something else that's going on. It cannot be just the support, the alleged support for Haqqani Network that triggered this kind of uh, barrage of accusations against Pakistan. Uh, I would like you to dwell a little bit into it and tell us a little bit more what, in your opinion, could be the other thing that the United States wants to accomplish by taking that kind of public posture. Well, you go ahead. Yeah. Uh, quite honestly, uh, all this hype up about the Haqqani network, I don't buy it. I've worked in Afghanistan for four years. I've followed it for three decades. The Haqqani network was certainly, yes, one of the Pakistani ministers or someone has said, the blue-eyed boys of the CIA are blue-eyed boys also because they delivered on the ground. But they were decimated. Excuse me, Dr. Khan. I, I, let and me, let me rephrase my question. That was not my question. Uh, uh, Mr. Khan, what I want to know is, in your opinion, what other motives could the United States try to accomplish through this posture if it's not actually seeing Haqqani Network as a potential threat to Afghanistan security and stability? What else is the United States trying to achieve in your opinion? It's very difficult to divine the American intentions. But what we know are the basic facts. Washington is a divided house. There is a constant, it's been going on for years, tussle between uh, the generals who wanted a surge and they wrenched it out of uh, Obama and the White House which wants to disengage and uh, focus on internal matters, infrastructure, education, health, things that which, are, which have been run down in the United States. <coughs> and then even amongst the generals, it's been a competitive business. They, they have not always been on the same page. They have been working against one another. General Patriots is supposed to have ambitions to, uh, of being a presidential candidate someday. Right. And Pakistan uh, feels okay. that Pakistan is being made a scapegoat. Let right. me just add one thing. Yeah. We don't know, really know what the motives are. But the campaign against Pakistan has not stopped. Now the New York Times has resurrected a story which really pertains to th May 2007, uh, which most Pakistanis had not even heard about. And it's been picked up by the BBC World Service, so it has a worldwide coverage now. And what, what is being said? What is being said is that Pakistanis went into a five-hour long session to find a solution uh, on a small border post sort of disagreement. And they had lunch together. And as soon as the whole thing was over, and the uh, Americans and the Afghans started walking towards the, the, their helicopters, the Pakistanis opened fire and killed an, an American major. And this is not uh, Pakistani at the time apparently explained that mm. one uh, frontier right. constabulary man had gone berserk. So on one <coughs> why would they go berserk two, every day in Afghanistan? Uh, and every day, like that, I mean, yeah. only day before yesterday, right. an Afghan killed a CIA right. man. So we'll, in, yeah, so we'll get. Break, yeah, we? we'll get uh, Dr. Pizadis. Mr. Right. Khan, we have to talk. We have to take a short break, break here. Yeah. Yes, we have to take a short break here. We'll be back after the break.